Hey, this is Derek from TCI, and in this episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about network infrastructure, which is something that my company specializes in. And in this particular video, I'm going to discuss the power supply, the battery backup system that you would attach to your switches. And when we build our networks, the UPS systems tend to be about a couple of hundred pounds for 3,000 kVA, 3 kVA, that sort of thing. And so I've had my eye for a long time on these lithium ion, various varieties of lithium UPSs to try and see if there's a smaller, more efficient way to go. And I've had my eye on this APC for quite a while. So I finally, uh, I broke down and bought it. So I just wanted to kind of, if you're interested in this, I thought I would talk a little bit about what, this has what advantages this has over a standard UPS. Uh, just for starters, I got the APC uh, 1500VA Smart Ups, and it's a beautiful case. It weighs about 40 pounds in a 3U uh, chassis. And the nice thing about this is it's exactly 12 inches deep. So it'll fit a wall rack just fine. Unlike the standard uh, sealed lead acid batteries, it's really difficult to fit those in a wall-mounted rack. Usually those need to go into a relay rack. The 1500VA has six ports on the back of it and a network port. The network port is there to connect you to the Smart Connect cloud. So the device will pull an IP, but it will not be anything you can manage without a network management card. It's got the same LCD screen that you're used to on every one of APC's uh, Smart Ups models. And if you're looking for an equivalent of what you might get from, say, Office Max, it's this one. This is a standard Backups 1500VA. It's the same capacity as the Smart Ups that I'm showing here. So let's put this through its paces. I've got a 350-watt server that I'm going to attach to this UPS. And I noticed as soon as I reviewed the load that this was just too little. So I thought, why don't we simulate an entire IDF here? We'll add some Cisco switches and make this seem like this is a little bit more real, real world. This should increase the load nicely. Now that we've shown a little bit of power draw on the LCD, Let's get a look at the runtime that you might expect in this scenario. So a server and two 48 port switches, of course, not currently under load, will get you about 18 to 21 minutes. I let the system run and confirm that this is the runtime before the device has failed. Access to the battery is through the front of the system. You must remove the two screws, uh, the four screws from the bezel, and then the battery compartment will be revealed. You can disconnect this live and you won't hurt anything on your devices. Your devices will keep going if you disconnect this live. The battery is extremely heavy, so be careful as you remove this, as it could fall. If you're on a ladder, it could tip you over easily. So for the smart ups, the 1500VA uses four cartridges that are filled with the lithium iron phosphate style of battery pouch. I went ahead and cracked the cover just to see what was in there. There's a very uh, significant heat sink and this item does get hot. There's a fan here that turns on if necessary. And in my testing on my desk, I found that the fan was never kicked on more than a very small low RPM. Uh, it didn't get hot and it didn't get noisy. It sat exactly right next to my computer tower. And while I worked with it for about a week, I didn't notice a single thing, never knew it was there. So I'd say it operates very quietly. I'm really impressed with the build quality overall. Although a few people have pointed out that the front bezel doesn't sit flush, which you can kind of see in this shot here. Uh, it's otherwise a very attractive case, very well built very solid. Okay, so like, when would you need this device? When would you want to use this over a standard sealed lead acid battery? Uh, the main one is when you've got an IDF in a remote location, say in a warehouse, 
uh, someplace you don't go very often, the short depth and the long lasting batteries. APC kind of advertises these as lasting about seven years. And given the battery technology that they've employed, I'm inclined to believe them. Uh, this will do well in an IDF situation. If you need about a half hour of runtime, you need to hold some switches up. So perhaps if you've got a warehouse and there's a distribution switch running a couple dozen IP cameras as, a, as an example, this would be appropriate. If you're gonna use this in a large, like say MDF or cage, your core network, you probably want the 3 kVA and maybe some exp expandable battery packs. And this little fellow would not be appropriate. It doesn't have enough wattage output to do more than one, two servers at a time. If you go heavy with it, where you're trying to keep an entire cage up, you want to go with APC's much bigger models. So this is appropriate for an IDF uh, that you don't visit often versus a sealed lead acid battery. This thing is about half the weight. So overall, I'm happy with it. Cost-wise, not so happy with it. It's probably at the time that I'm filming this, I would say this is approximately 10 times the cost of a sealed lead acid battery. So if you balance the slight um, advantages that you get for going with lithium over a sealed lead acid, balance that cost. That cost is huge. The jump is immense. And you're probably not seeing a huge advantage in terms of performance. You're definitely not getting any runtime difference. You're just squeezing the same amount of runtime into less space. And if that makes sense for your application, you're in an enclosed environment, perhaps a weatherproofing area, something where you can't go particularly large with your batteries, this may be the way to go. But I think for most applications, the sealed lead acid battery still has a huge advantage. Okay, well, hey, thanks for watching. Appreciate that. I hope this was helpful uh, when you make your purchasing decisions. Thanks. Bye.